Let's talk about ZSH shell in this video. ZSH is one of those things where it's kind of an enigma for many users, but if you're on Mac or Linux, a lot of times you're using Bash shell by default. And Bash is great, but at the same time, there's something better. And ZSH is better. Some people mention Fish, but I think ZSH kind of takes the cake. And the reason for that being is many of its plugins are just extremely powerful. And I really didn't understand this until I really got into ZSH and I started using these plugins and I realized quickly I was picking up a lot of productivity just because of uh, the efficiencies behind ZSH and its plugin system. So in this video, let's go over getting your shell to use CSH and use some of these plugins because ZSH by itself, when you just install it, it's ugly, it doesn't work all that great. Uh, but really, once you unlock it and you add these plugins, man, it makes a world of difference. So let's get into it. Before we get into the video, I do live stream over on Twitch both Monday and Friday. Uh, so if you'd like to ask a question, head over there, ask me live. Or you can check out all the archives of all my past streams over on Chris Titus Tech Streams. The links are in the description. So with that, let's get into our video. Okay, to start out with here on ZSH, you'll notice I have a website called christitis.com forward slash ZSH is the actual web page. Uh, from here, you'll be able to skip around and basically follow anything I do on the video. It kind of goes over why ZSH dependencies and it's all kind of bookmarked right here. So with that said, let's jump right in it. Uh, these are all your dependencies, ZSH, ZSH dash syntax highlighting, auto jump, and auto suggestions. These are mainly the ones I choose to use, but it depends on your personal preference. If you don't want these, you can obviously not use them. So going to our command prompt here, we can easily kind of showcase some of this. So if you've got uh, Arch installed, you can do yay s, or if it's a Debian, apt install will also have these packages, but like zsh, zsh syntax, highlighting and that would actually pull in both these packages so you'd, you'd add all those packages in the dependencies obviously i've already done it on this one so i don't actually need to install them so if we come back over to here we've installed all four of these packages we continue with the setup um, this basically is just an easy way of grabbing my current configuration that i'm going over in this video uh, i'm just going to walk through each one of these lines so you know what they do wget gets the .zshrc file. This is like bashrc. So if we do a listing, uh, and actually we'll do an all listing showing hidden files as well, you'll see the .zshrc. Now let's nano into that, and you'll easily see what all I have set up. Now by default, zsh doesn't have anything set up. So if you don't have a zshrc uh, file, it's really not a very good uh, shell. You have to really kind of pimp it out, so to speak, and make it really nice where it does colors and other things, has a long history size, uh, all these really nice features. So I went ahead and have that in here. Uh, you'll see like the history size file, all that is right in the cache directory. Um, auto loading, this just kind of loads some of the basic auto tab completions, custom ZH binds. This is control space to accept so auto suggestions and then loading aliases, which I have in a different file under the .zsh from the home directory, alias rc. And then lastly, this just loads the plugins. This is a little more complex than just using, oh my gosh, zsh, uh, but I like this method because it's a little more minimalistic, so that's why I've a, a done zsh rc in this manner. So coming back into here, you do that. We also make the directory .zsh and then grab my aliases file. I already have like a basic aliases file on my GitHub that you can pull. If we go nano.zsh forward slash aliases, you'll see uh, just some really cool stuff. So let's say you need to extract a zip file or a tar.gz file, whatever it might be. You can easily just do ex space and then the file and it automatically picks what it needs to uncompress and, and use that file, which is great. So this is a neat little alias. And then just standard aliases. If you use Vim, obviously change your editor to Vim. I do a Pac-Man update for just updating the mirrors, just so I always have fast downloads on Arch. And then like just your standard listings like LL, LS, uh, all these, I like to add all of those aliases in right here. And 
Everything else is pretty standardized, you know, using H for head and, and uh, T for tail. Just some really nice shortcuts so you can easily get around in uh, your, your shell. So just a, the basics is what I'm covering here. And then lastly, I like to kind of customize the shell by using pure shell. So just a cloning this, and just copying, pasting this line, adds pure into .zsh, and it gives it this shell, this minimal shell theme. So it tells you how long you've been editing something when you go and do it. Uh, if you go into a certain directory, you can go to downloads and so on and so forth. It just kind of kind of really shows just what you need. As some shells show like the host name and everything, I'm not a big fan of that anymore where I just want to know where I'm at in the shell. So once you get that done, the complete the switch over, uh, we'll just switch from bash to ZSH. Just edit your etc passwords file, which we can do that just by doing sudo nano etc password like that. Come down to your username, which mine is Titus. You'll see Titus right here. Come to the end of the line. This will be bin dash bash. Just change it to dot zsh and then exit and relaunch your, uh, your, your shell. Just go exit and then just simply relaunch and you'll be back in here and you'll have ZSH. Everything will be right with the world and exactly how I've configured it. So the cool thing is syntax highlighting where you get, you got that uh, highlight as it you go through, you can see the syntax highlighting. Uh, if you go nano, you see how if it's not a valid command, it's red. As soon as it turns into a valid command, it goes green. That's just a neat feature. I also like auto jump. Auto jump kind of takes you to certain directories. Like if I do uh, J, for auto jump and want to pull up CTT. It remembers my history. So in my history, I was on my home directory, backup, Synology drive, CTT directory, which is my website. And I can just jump right there with that. Likewise, if I just go jump downloads and do a tab for completion, it just automatically remembers that and does it. Remember, you have to be in this directory once before you actually go ahead and do this. So make sure you get in your directory and then you'll be fine for the actual jump command. Now this actually can go a little bit further, which is nice. So uh, there's J-O, which if we do J-O CTT, you'll notice it actually pulls it up in file. So it's kind of neat. It launches your file browser and pulls up this in a file. So that can actually go around and go, you know what? I need to edit this config terminal file on my website and just kind of do that. And okay, okay, I'm done. And then just jump back into here go ahead and get back into our shell and that's it. So JO is really nice. This is just a very easy way of getting and browsing around with the auto jump command. Now there's one more plugin I use that I wanted to show and that is the auto suggestions. It based based on your history. So uh, let's say we go CD and you see how it has that downloads in gray. If I just hold control and space, it auto fills that. So it, obviously we're already in the downloads directory. So but that said, we'll get to our home directory, and that is just ZSH in the very, very short period of time. Uh, just basic to get your feet wet. There's a lot more plugins, a lot more things you can do with this, but just a fantastic alternative to Bash Shell. So that was ZSH Shell. Uh, I absolutely love this. This is now my new daily driver compared to Bash. Yes, there was some really cool stuff with Bash, but really, once you add this plugin functionality out, it just outperforms Bash in every way. So this is why you'll start seeing on my videos uh, actually using this new shell. It's really, really good, um, and I think you'll really enjoy it. So with that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next one.